question. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 410. Uh, is it 410 or 409? I think uh, Dan's chucked a wobbly on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm fairly sure it's 409. But anyway, uh, if we've got 410, that's what we'll be. Um, yeah, with us tonight, we have uh, uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, Wasa Web. Uh, dot net in the UK. Uh, he's he lives in Wimbledon. Um, Micah Fisher Kirshner is based on the west coast of the USA. He lives not too far from Silicon Valley. Runs a, an SEO meetup group and is has recently um, been appointed vice president of uh, um, a company, Turn River Capital. Uh, is it? Turn River Capital in the good old USA. Yep. And um, Richard, um, we have born in um, born in Ireland, uh, living in uh, Thailand, and mainly working on Tier One sites in Australia. Uh, Richard Hearn doesn't know which country he belongs to, um, but uh, he's with us tonight and. Uh, we're grateful of that. that Tim Kappa um, has just won uh, um, uh, several um, awards. Um, won as uh, best local SEO agency, and um, uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, I'm sure he'll tell us when he comes back. He can't wait to tell us. Anyway, let's um, have a look. We have um, four hundred. We're in. We have nine questions. Let's see how long it takes us to get through them. Question one uh, um, is immediate ways I can use to improve my website website ranking locally. Um, I um, oh, okay, I'll read it. It's high. Looking for some SEO related answers here. Will guest posting. Uh, in a website, help to improve my website ranking in Singapore. Um, what are some immediate ways I can use to improve my website ranking locally? Uh, thanks uh, to all. Um, look, don't all fight about it, guys. It, it, it's... Um, it's uh, well. Let, let, let me say that will guest get, will guest posting in a US website help to uh, improve my uh, website ranking in Singapore? I don't think so. I don't think it'll mean a thing. But um, no doubt uh, when Tim comes back from getting his coffee, he'll have m better ideas than me. <laughs> Look. Uh... You know, in of itself, it, let's just narrow it down to the basics. Like, you know, links do play a, a function of the algorithm. Um, the concept in of itself will depend on what you're trying to do. There's there's a lot of qualifications that come with it. Um, the, the more relevant, uh, the more you can have it closer to you know, your location, your actual location geographically, the better. Um, can, can, can a program like that work? Yeah, but, you know, you, you need to make sure it's not some violation of guidelines. You need to make sure that it's not there specifically as a, as a pure link play. Um, it's a guest post actually providing links over. There's a, there's a slew of different things that can play a part. Um, but, it, yeah, um, it won't be as efficient and it won't be as as useful if it's not something that's within the region for which you're trying to rank. It's the way that I, I would put it in broad terms. Thank you, Micah. Tim, I, I forgot well, while you were away, uh, I forgot um, the other award that you uh, got recently. What was that? 
Mm, there's been so many, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, uh, uh, last year, uh, best local SEO consultancy. That's right. That that um, was um, as um, best in Middle Earth, wasn't it? Yeah, in Middle Earth. That is correct. <laughs> um, but what about the, the one just very recently? I'm, I'm I'm sure there was an award. No, there was an award. It was just listed as one of the 202 <laughs> seos to follow <laughs> that's right well that's as along good. with along with micah micah was in that wasn't he yeah yeah I actually I, I don't know if richard Hearn was there were, were you richard <laughs> why would i be there i'm not well, someone to follow you all should be except for me anyway uh, will we move on to the next one? Oh, um, Tim, um, you probably wanted to, to, to speak on this one anyway. Um, it's um, from a young lady. She wants to know, um, she's looking for some SEO-related answers, um, and she wants to know, will guest posting in a US website help to improve her website ranking in Singapore? <laughs> Uh, unless that website is related to Singapore and or the specific relevance topic of it. Um, yeah. It's off the top of my head, I would say no. But, you know, without looking at it and looking at the relevance of it, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Fair enough. Better than nothing or not? If it's a legit site, you know, like off the top of my head, my feeling is that if you have found someone that accepts a guest post, off the, my, my gut feeling is no, don't bother. Um, but if you've been approached, uh, by a legitimate site, um, they're a good site, they want to do a collaboration, um, you know, and, and, and the nature of the discussion was in that form, then, then yes. But if you came across the site or you found it on Fiverr or something like this, then it's a, then it's a no from me. Hmm. Fair enough. All right, let's uh, uh, move just on. Just a here. quick question. Uh, is my screen, I'm seeing Jim's thing saying presenting. Is that me seeing something weird or? No, that'll be me doing something wrong. Um, but you, you're seeing what mine's saying you're presenting to everyone. I'm, yeah. Jim. I'm not actually seeing, you're not actually presenting something in that sense. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, um, what I want is is to have um, my um, script on online. Um, let me see. We'll try this. Um, your entire screen. How about that? Is that working? Oh, yeah. There we go. Ah, good. Thank you for that. Okay, let's go to number two. I promised Richard Hearn this would take 35 minutes. Um, we've used 34. Um, okay. Deva, Divya Raj wants to know which methods should, I think it's she, um, uh, use for link building. Um, is there any alternative to Ahrefs for Broken link building. Nobody in the, the community on um, dumb SEO, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, had a, um, an answer to this. I wonder what, what the person means by broken link building. Are they looking for links that they're going to reclaim to their site? Or are they looking for links that are broken to third party sites that they want to replace? 
Um, there may I be some way to do it. Yeah. What do you think, Rob? I personally think he's looking for links to third parties that are broken that he can then go in and replace. And, you know, contact them and go, hey, I noticed, you know, da, 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 did you know, like, whatever I'm thinking. Well, there probably are ways they could do it manually without paying. I mean, they could probably try and get, like, if they looked over their target term and tried to figure out a way to, let's say, search Google and, and limit the search to the types of pages that they're looking for, not quite sure how they do that, but I'm sure there's a way. Um, they could then use something like, I mean, even Screaming Frog or something like that, that's the free version will allow you to crawl like 500 URLs. And what you do is you put in a single URL and you tell it to crawl everything it finds on that. And that's how you'd identify the broken links. But you could spend an awful long time getting nowhere. Um, so you'd probably want to use a third party tool. Um, maybe you might want to look for domains that drop and then look for sites that are linking to those domains to figure out the broken links but you're probably better off unless your time is not valuable you're probably better off paying for something that's going to give you some of that information thank you richard all right so will we move on to the next any objections Okay, this one from Solomon Hohenheim Tesla. Um, he wants to know, what would you do to improve rankings and or traffic? He said, I'm working on an aged site, 10 years, um, with very good traffic uh, and good on-site, but it only has 750 good quality domains. <laughs> linking to it only has um what would you do outside of on-site to improve rankings and or traffic so personally for me i wouldn't be thinking um uh, i wouldn't be thinking outside i mean 750 decent domains linking to you um you say it's aged it's got good traffic i would now start looking at refining that traffic i would start looking at where a piece on that site uh, or related search queries are positioning on let's say pay you know position uh, uh, 10 10 upwards 10 position 10 11 12 13. um <clears throat> and looking at how you can incorporate that search query into the current content to push for that search query to be improving based on, you know, potential traffic or actually if, if it's not a good fit, actually looking at satisfying that user query or that fit on the site better. Um, I, I literally, if you've got good traffic, you, you know, everything on site's good, I would actually be looking at improving, um, it, 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 you know, you know, refining, refining where and your, your, your traffic's coming from um, and, and refining. That's what I would spend my time on rather than basically looking for links on, you know, essentially, you know, um, other, other way, you know, you could actually, all sites can benefit from, from social if, if, if it, you know, is relevant to the, to the brand and the business. Um, but that's typically not really in the SEO realm, but you could certainly be discussing things better, you know, there. Um, but I, I personally wouldn't be looking off site. I, I'd be looking on site and impro uh, improving and refining the, the, the site itself. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that, um, that most uh, SEOs would kill for the opportunity uh, to have a, a site with 750 good quality domains linking. It's all relative, though. I mean, we don't really know what how this guy is defining quality as well. Like, so, I mean, I'm not suggesting he doesn't know, but we don't know. We can't see it. But Tim makes some good points. Definitely, you'd want to, if I was looking at this, or I think if any of us were looking at this, we'd be looking at content. 
like for an age site with a decent enough backlink profile, like why would you want to, you, you've probably built up a lot of equity that you can just push around. And if you get a really good content strategy that's really focused on what you're going after or what, what your, your target users are interested in, and you're probably going to get much better results than you are anything sort of offsite. Offsite is really tricky these days, and if you build, if you do build good content, that can be the key to getting these offsite signals. So it, it just seems a bit bizarre to be asking, uh, "What would you do outside of onsite?" Uh, there's very few sites that there aren't improvements that you can make onsite without even touching the content. Like there's very few sites that have no technical problems as well. So. Um, yeah, it just, it sounds like somebody, maybe somebody is in a situation where they've been told they can't touch the site, but they have to try and generate better rankings. And that might not be the type of site you want to work for if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Call that one a wrap, and we'll go to the next one, number four on our run list. Uh, it's titled, Is it worth relying on the Google Keyword Planner? Uh, Paulikas Thomas goes on to say, hello, everybody. I have a simple question for people who are good or experienced at SEO and blogging. The question is, is it worth relying on the Google Keyword Planner, which gives me uh, brackets, volume of searches per month, and competition on certain keywords. Um, I think that's all he said. Yes, it is. I mean, what else do you have? Um, so most, you'll find a lot of the tools um, are using that system of, of, of data anyway. Um, and the ones that aren't are looking outside of Google uh, itself. So <clears throat> at least within um, the specific web search, uh, there are some that try to match up with either other search engines or other sets of uh, areas. You know, they try to figure it out through things like Google Suggest, Autocomplete, uh, aka. Um, but you know, it, it, it is a helpful area to give you an understanding of at least the likelihood of what people are searching for. You got to keep in mind, of course, of what's missing and, and the error of which the data you're receiving, but um, it's better than nothing. And at least it's an area for you to begin with. Thank you, Micah. Any more? Do you know, I can remember, I, I don't even know how long ago, and I can't even remember the name of some of the tools, but there were tools that used ISP data a long time ago for the keywords, the keyword research. And it was pretty fascinating if you had access to them, like they were enterprise. But um, yeah, I remember that, that those days were pretty interesting where you, you were getting this ISP data in terms of what people were searching for. But uh, yeah. Yeah, Google got rid of that with nice HTTPS, et cetera, I'm sure. So, but yeah, nothing really to add to that. I mean, look, at least this person is doing keyword research, which is actually reasonably good. You know, it's better than nothing. Uh, yeah, why not? It's, it's at least you have some data, but you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So, okay. Before we move on, I, I must point out the, the people like uh, Michael Martinez, uh, Michael Stricker, um, Brenda Malone, who answered questions uh, on the Domestico Questions Facebook group uh, throughout the week and make it such a, a valuable uh, resource. Um, I, right. I, there's good comments in there, by the way, from, from as always, from Michael Martinez about using Search Console. By the like, it's it's. It's not a bad source of keyword research for your own site, but of course, it only includes what you are appearing for in terms of some of the, the queries, but it, it won't show you opportunities that you're not leveraging in some way. So, but as always, a very good uh, response from him. Excellent. Yes. Um, this one is from Laz Delia Jimenez Diaz. 
Um, question five on our run list. It's titled DXing author categories and labels via robots. Um, now, Liz Delia Jimenez Diaz goes on to say hello. Do you think it's good to de index uh, author categories and labels via robots or Yoast? Applying this will help me to reduce duplicate content and content cannibalization. Have the tags and author um, reduced the Google share? Thanks for your answers. I know this will help. Uh, so you're two different things when you say robots are Yoast because robots TXT, which you shouldn't be adding it to disallow to your robots TXT as a disallow. That's a, 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 you shouldn't be. But Yoast will be using the follow like the no follow index, uh, which would be better for you to deal with, um, uh, you know, a, a load of crap um, tags. I don't know why you'd want to be doing categories though. You shouldn't like if you if we're talking about something where one it's a um if it's like sort of this is like in terms of a news section on your site you should be more refined with your categories um and you should be selecting a category to place that piece of content in that is most applicable to if you're talking sort of let's say with in terms of product terms you be sure to mark something as primary because that will be reflected. And if you say, yes, you're using WordPress, that will handle that correctly. Um, and you can select multiple categories for a product which fits it within to multiple categories. Um, but um, if you're talking sort of your new stuff, uh, yeah, you know, be selective with your categories. I don't know why you would want to be no indexing them. I would rather, uh, if you've got crap, if you've got crap categories, which are um, yeah, sort of merging into one another type categories, then it would be better to shift those articles, sort your way through it, shift the articles into a better selection of categories and just remove the category you know there's no point keeping a dysfunctional category based in your you know in your news the right just tidy it up so look what you've got define better categories which and then go through re you know move the articles into better categories and just delete the others or at least you can in 301 if they're actually the top level category does get and you know you could actually have your top level category then actually performing a lot better so i uh, you know a lot of the things that, that you're suggesting here could be worked much better for you in terms of tags same again tags can actually work but if you're just selecting multiple crap tags for an article or a product, then yeah, look, just just you know, like like no index follow it via via Yoast. But I'm going to say again, you can use them very effectively and well if you actually define these properly. So. Yeah. Comments coming. So the first comment that if you removed or no indexed your categories, you change your architecture quite considerably and categories will broaden your architecture, make your, your site more flat. If you take them away, you make your site very deep and that's generally not a good thing for your SEO. The, the other thing I would say about this is if you no index your author pages and if you're anywhere near, even near your money or your life, you're screwing yourself because your author pages and the interlinking between pages and authors will be used by Google uh, for certain deterministic systems they use for that your money, your money, your life, and eat. So I would definitely not do that. And Tim mentioned about tag pages. Yeah, tags. If you if you build them right and if you actually build around tags, you can actually get some really really good value. I've built 
I've built some serious traffic for some clients using what would be referred to as topic pages as opposed to tag pages because they're not on blogs. And for large sites where you've got a lot of a lot of page rank and a lot of authority, and um, you can really push it into these and you can rank for stuff. If you want to go have a look, have a look, do a search for something like a country name, and you'll probably see the guardian.com ranking in the top 10 for any country you, you, you enter, depending on what country you're searching from. And it'll be their topic page that is actually ranking for it. And it's a topic page. There's very little about the country on that page. And um, so that's a good indicator of, of what can be done with that. Um, be very, very careful what you know index or what you try and block. Uh, don't block things with robots.txt because that syncs page rank. Um, even, even no indexing on a page is probably going to sync page rank as well. Fix your architecture. It, it's rubbish in, rubbish out. If you set it up well, there's no rubbish going in. And yeah, just, yeah. I mean, Tim gave some good advice there as well. But, but don't. I think this person is probably looking in the wrong place. They're probably seeing a problem. Like you've got to set, step back and ask, what problem are you trying to fix? And will this fix the problem you're trying to address? And my guess is that they probably won't get value out of doing what they're suggesting. Yep. All right, so let's move on to number six on our run list. This one from Shauna Clark, um, who said, or the title of this one is, uh, my blog is not showing up in Google search. Shauna said, hi, everyone. When my blog post goes live, it, it is not showing up in Google search for one and a half to two weeks later. Uh, is this normal? Yes, it is. Um, if not, how do you fix it? Thank you. Install Yoast or something like that. Anything that generates a sitemap and submits it to Google on your behalf. Maybe Google News Publisher or something like that if you're news. Uh, yeah, it's probably you just need to tell them that there's something there. Use WebSub or something like that. Or even, yeah, I don't know, get someone to link to you. Yep. Nothing to add, Tim? Any, any, anybody else? No, you know, yeah, you know, Google, Google typically will, will, you know, I hate to say it, but if it's not really a massively popular site, Google tends to not crawl it as often. But same as Richard said, you know, if you've if you've got a site map and you you've submitted that to Search Console, every time something gets added to that site map, you know, you're telling Google, hey, there's a new page. Um, depending on what your social media following is like, you know, you could be, uh, you, you know, you could be having people share that a bit more. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can still submit, what is it, 10 URLs to Search Console for indexing a day? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that will get your page indexed quicker or, or use like the rich, rich results testing tool or the mobile friendly tool. And I think actually, that they do, I, I, I suspect that the rich results testing tool actually gets them to recrawl the page if they know it. So that, that might work as well. You can give it a try. But submit your pages into Search Console if you've only got a few a day. Thank you, Richard. All right, let's um, have a look at number seven on our run list. It's from Emma Carlson. Its title is, I have some thoughts on how 301 redirects affect search engine optimization. Emma said, hi, have some thoughts on how 301 redirects affect SEO. Uh, say you have a website with, for example, the domain newcar.com, and you would also manage to get hold of the domains buycar.com and carsforsale.com, if only. If you then make 301 redirects from the two uh, uh, newly purchased domains and point them both towards my site, newcar.com, does it negatively affect the site's SEO or uh, it can be positive or is it, simply, uh, new is it simply neutral and does not 
affect anything. Will Google give more traffic to my site, newcar.com? Uh, when you Google on, uh, for example, the keywords buy car, buy car, or cars for sale. I'm going to say all of the, the above and I'm going to stay quiet. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it depends. So, look, um, let's take this like this. You've bought a new domain, buy a car, and then you essentially it's brand new. It's a brand new domain, which I think that's what you're talking about. Or when you said I've managed to get hold of, I don't know if you meant these were expired. I don't know. But uh, so let's look at two. Um, examples, Tim. So you but you've registered and you you it was brand new to main buy a car right and then you 301 redirected to your i don't know what the other one was um you know w whatever it may be um that is brand new it's never existed it's got nothing nothing behind it absolutely zero nothing um <sighs> how do you think it will benefit you in any way, shape or form? Like literally the only way someone will come to the site is if for some reason they th thought this website by uh, was the one that they were thinking of and they literally searched it and then they would be redirected to your, your other site. Uh, I don't believe that there would be any benefit in any way, shape, or form, on a brand new domain going to the next domain. I, I, I just yeah, but but I, there's an assumption in there about brand new domains like that. That might be a lofty assumption. I don't know. I didn't. Maybe did it say in the in the question it was they were new domains or they were well. She new just new said domains. she said I've managed to get hold of now. Yeah. So so we've done the new domain thing now. So that's the new domain. So now let's assume that I've managed to get hold of an expired domain. Yeah. So your first then, Emma, is why is this expired and what does it have with it? it but okay. we know it's expired, for instance. Okay, I mean, or maybe she just purchased it. Just I, I don't know. I've got a business, I've just started up, and I'm Joe's Cars. And I happen to win the lottery. And I go out and I buy a large competitor that's for sale. And I redirect their side to mine. And there's a very legitimate, you know, case. It may not happen, mm. all, but it's a legitimate case for someone redirecting something in. So you've got to ask yourself then, okay, if you've got this sort of, and it's not, I wouldn't even call that an edge case. That's a legitimate case. How will mm -hmm. Google know the difference between that legitimate case and somebody who is buying hundreds or thousands of expired domains and redirecting them because like there is a huge market in 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 expired domains especially with backlink profiles so mm -hmm. as much as i can't say that i know from experience whether it works or not now because it's not something i'm involved in i know that there's a big enough market and big enough money chasing these domains that i have to assume that these people aren't all tick and that they must know something about the efficacy of of redirecting those domains but coming back to this how does google know to discount the 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 legitimate person who's gone off and bought a competitor and is now redirecting them to their site for branding reasons which makes perfect sense against somebody who's trying to game the system that's that's the question that i don't yeah, know. yeah. so so she has, she has also quite a good word for you emma in in that in and richard this is a good one so asos recently bought top shop top man miss suffrage for 265 million dollars yep. pounds right yep. Yep. they are not running and they don't want any of the actual business apart from the web yeah but they aren't redirecting anything so that those are going to be run independently as the brands they were mm -hmm. and then of course asos is going to supply them in that sense so they are literally so if you're buying something that's already like running that is ace that is working in an online platform it has its own following branding you know but then they bought the brands 
Like yeah. that's what they paid for. They paid specifically for the brands. Like they're never going to redirect them because why would they redirect it unless they're going to get totally. rid of the brands? Totally. Yeah. So like that's a case where they bought the brands and that makes sense not to redirect. But let's say, coming back to my example, I buy, you know, a larger competitor. Well, I'm not going to go to his brand. Like I'm going to fold them into my <laughs> company. Like, if I'm a small business person, I'm not, I'm going to fold them in under me. Why wouldn't you be? Why wouldn't you be doing it the other way around? Well, I, I might be. I might. Like, be I might it. fold. I might, brand, but if I if I've bought a competitor and I won the lottery and I've bought a bigger, it's operating, it's working, and I'm just a little guy. Why wouldn't you fold your, evolve yourself into that one that's no, already no, working? Absolutely, I don't disagree with that. Like, there's a there's yeah. a like it's a it's a perfectly reasonable thing that, that that you could go either way i'm not suggesting one or the yeah. other but i'm just saying how would google know to differentiate between the guy who's trying to yeah. get in the system and does yeah. it just with a couple of domains and the guy who's yeah. legitimately needing to redirect one business into the other because they've just combined or merged or whatever like that's where it becomes tricky and anything that google might say about this hurting you or not working i'm not saying that it will work but I think you need to like it's the old it depends shitty answer again. But you've got to look at the the you know what is the system that you're working with here. Like does does the does the site that you're redirecting into does it have a lot of quality content which actually is aligned with the site that the redirect is coming from? Can you do one to one redirects that actually make sense? I mean, I I'd be inclined to say even a site that's been offline for a couple of months you could probably redirect it in and if you're very well aligned on the content um i'm willing to gamble that some of those links will start to give you some benefit because google will so, will start to say well you know this this probably is a good destination for these users or there's there could be a legitimate reason why this domain was offline for a couple of months i mean they could say well the owner could have lost access to the domain had to restart a new site and then just yeah yada 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 I mean, yeah. I'm just, I think it's very grey is the best way to put it. There's, there's also the other thing to think about is if you purchase, uh, let's say this was an expired domain, I don't know, the, the person who died, the site, whatever, lost access, whatever the case would be, um, and, and it does happen that in even some people forget to re renew a domain. There has been cases where massive companies have forgotten to renew the domain. Someone bought Google dot something uh, last year. Someone uh, someone bought a Google domain. Anyway, um, so if you've bought something like this uh, in that instance or whatever the case may be, and it had you know check if it had a site behind it, it may actually be worth looking at that and 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 in the sense of it may actually be worth running a tandem in conjunction with, you know, um, you could you could rebuild that site and what it was um, instead of redirecting, you know, to see what it was doing. You, you could rebuild that original site. So I think we've given Emma maybe too much to think about now. I can remember just going back, like, I can remember, it's probably more than like, it probably is more than 15 years ago. I can remember buying expired domains and trying to rebuild the sites to see what would happen. Like it was, it was like, I wasn't trying to game anything or like I was just doing it to try and understand how search worked better. And, and you could regain, like I got sites, they, they might have only been like 10 page sites. And you, if you know, I went, I'd go into Wayback Machine or whatever, and I'd, I'd, I'd look at the content. And I know it's not particularly kosher, but it wasn't to, to benefit in any way, or it wasn't a commercial website to be informational, just to see what would happen when you reinstated it. And you could get your rankings back. And then, of course, I had to try to see well, what happens when I reinstate them, leave them for a while, and then redirect them in somewhere. And I know nowadays you'd be, you'd probably be shunned for doing that type of thing, but like, you know, if you don't experiment, you won't know how things work. And now it's not something I've done in recent years. Like if this has gone back 10, 15 years at least. But like people, are, people are still doing it. You, people you are could, still doing it and it still works. You could do it back then. Well, there you go. I mean, 
So, like, there probably is some benefit to this, but I, I would never, I don't think I would ever rely on this as my central, my central, a central plank to my SEO strategy, unless I'm in a market or a niche where this is what everyone is doing. And therefore, if everyone does it well, everyone's equal, it, I'm equally punished. The, 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 the people that tend to be doing it at the minute are affiliate marketers. So they will be looking at additional affiliate marketers that have let domains go, you know, because they just couldn't make a go of affiliate marketing, but they had a decent site. They rebuild that and then they start working it as almost like a PBN for their other affiliate in the same kind of niche. So it's the affiliate guys that tend to be doing it because yeah. it's become really, it's become really tough out there for them. You know, Amazon reduced their commissions and yeah, it's become quite tough out there for affiliates. It hasn't gotten any easier the last two weeks, I can tell you. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, not. Like, like most, of, a lot of the affiliates are going to be in like you know gambling, pills, porn, you know as well, and like those sort of shady areas where people are going to like everyone's going to be up to no good. So everyone is going to get punished equally, and in that sort of scenario, you know the risk is probably worth it because everyone's going to be getting penalised left, right, and centre. So, but that's a different world. That's that's a different world, a different beast altogether. Anyway, how much have we segued on this one? Well, it's just that, uh, you know, I mean, oh, I've got a site that's 23 years old and um, it's an affiliate site and we don't have any pills or porn or uh, gambling. Yeah, but you're just old, Jim. <laughs> Thank, you. Oh. Thank you. I mean, is it selling old shit as well? Like, or what's the deal? Like, is it selling new things or old things? <laughs> is it selling high quality brands? Oh, excuse me. Oh, he's He's taken that personally, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'll tell you what, you better be nice or we'll DDoS you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not scared. All right. So, will we go on to number um, seven? Oh, by the way, I'm having heaps of fun doing this tonight. I don't know why. That's for you, Richard. Or would it be Tim? Who knows? i I, I got to say something. I don't know what the next question is. I think that Masataki has to answer it. <laughs> well, Masataki, how can you get a word in with you two? Anyway, George, George Artis. Um, George is, um, uh, if, if, if it's the George, George Artis that uh, I'm thinking of, he's an SEO. Um, and he's also a member of our group. Um, it's titled the same domain name, but different in extension. He said, and he's a very perceptive guy because he said, hi, SEO experts. <laughs> he said, I have a domain name that is the same name as a .com, but we want the .io equivalent. The .com is a very established company, but in a completely different space slash industry. How are they going to affect our SEO? Our keywords um, will be uh, different from theirs. Uh, their Alexa rank is 89. Write this down. Alexa rank doesn't mean shit. Um, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mentioning Alexa rank is as old as you're using that. Oh, he's very perceptive. <laughs> that's, that's your Alexa rank, Jim. Oh, I like this man. He's very perceptive. <laughs> I know. Being second on the search results when they search by name. But in general, I want to grow our SEO for our domain. Uh, please, can you help with this question? Masataki, I think you might have looked out here. I don't know. How's your .io expertise? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um... I mean, I'm just, I, th I think I understood the situation, but I may not have. So there is a .com site um, that's not his, right? Apparently and he wants to, brand, yeah. yeah. I mean, A, I mean, if it's a trademarking trouble, if the .com, in a, if the name, as a trademark, you might have been a bit of trouble there. Because if you're going to use a trademark term, 
and then you know, put a different extension and put a totally different thing on it. Um, that could be problematic. And in a sense, I th what would be the point of it? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see why. You know, you're going to be battling all day long, even though, like, just trying to get. Like, I know it's going to be a different brand. It's in a different space. Uh, and it and it's representing a different product or vertical than this than this other one. I don't see how you're going to compete against a brand that has built up their name for that because you know people won't necessarily type in .io. They you know people are if they're looking for something and they remember a site, they tend to just type in the brand. And let's say five years from now, you've developed a good thing, but people still aren't typing in IO and they're still typing in just XYZ brand and you are literally not showing for it. Like, I'm, you know, it, uh, yeah, you know, how popular is this? I mean, you say it's popular, well, no, but mm, I mean, it could take you years before you even hit like, a potentially even a, depending on how big this brand is, you you may it could take you years before you even appear for your own name like on that first page because you're competing against that that other brand yeah like how is google going to know who they want to, how how is google going to know for that brand name what people are looking for how will they show you you know it's to me it's yeah i uh, I'm I gonna, think I I'm think gonna inject some optimism, yeah. Okay, you, you optimism, right? I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you some of the good things about this, okay? Dot AO, the one the first thing I'm gonna say is right now, it's a bit unfair because like I do a little bit of domaining on the side and I happen to have quite a lot of dot IOs and they're pretty hot at the moment. Like the values of dot IOs are pretty crazy, yeah. Um but aside from that, um IO is probably getting more recognizable and more recognition, and especially because of like tech and crypto, they're the main areas that are using it. But it's really is taking off. So I wouldn't be too concerned about the TLD and recognition because I think more people are going to start seeing .io and associating that in some way with certain technologies, whether it's it's virtual reality or, or as I said, crypto and some technology. I mean, the other one that's pretty hot as well as is dot, dot ai which is obviously artificial intelligence people are associating that with in terms of the brand right i wouldn't be too worried if he's happy enough to be second fiddle when people are searching for the brand well then i would not be put off by using a different tld because i don't think the tld will ever matter from a ranking perspective like google isn't going to use it as a signal they're going to use all the rest of the signals that everyone can get so if you build your site in .io and you build it well and you get recognition and you get news or whatever written about you, um, you will start to rank. And I'm not gonna like you're probably not gonna outrank this big beast of a brand. Um, but if you're not, you may not necessarily have to rely on a pure on pure branded search because a lot of a lot of branded search is your brand with something. And as long as you're very differentiated from the big guy, if you're if someone searches for your brand and product, you will appear in, in the results. So I'd be inclined to like I like let's put it this way, all the good dot coms are gone. Okay. It's very, very hard to get any decent dot com domains. And if you can get a decent one word dot io domain and it, it it sort of matches your your target, you know, your marketing, etc., I go for it. Because those domains, like in a couple of years, they're probably just, they're going to all be gone as well. So sometimes you got to look at it in terms of, well, what are the, what, what alternatives do you have? And to be honest, if it's a nice short, especially a one word .io, I'd absolutely jump at it. That's, that'd be my view. Um, and I wouldn't be too, like, I'm guessing from the question that he, he, he knows about trademarks because he mentions about them being in a different niche. And I mean, Unless the company is an Apple or a Google or, you know, a real troll, 
you're probably safe from trademark stuff. Um, and once you're established, it's very unlikely that you'd lose your domain in a UDRP anyway. So I don't know. I, like I, I'm not. I'm not saying that that that, that some of the comments that the other guys gave like that they're, they're they're perfectly valid. But there's probably pros and cons, and you just got to weigh it up. And like I said, I think .io is going to be a lot more recognizable in, in, in two or three years than it is today. And you might well be investing very wisely by going with .io, certainly over some of the other TLDs that are still knocking around. And I certainly wouldn't go with any of the GTLDs unless they're really well aligned with your, with your, with your name. Brilliant. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Linesman. Thank you, Bull Boys. All right, uh, let's uh, move on to um, number nine on our run list. There's any, if there, nobody has any objections? Recording that as a yes. Okay, number nine is from Don Perez Fressard. Um, it's titled Picking a URL for a Simple Google My Business Site. Um, um, Google product expert, Mr. Tim Kapper, uh, might be interested in this one. It says, picking a URL for a simple Google My Business site for a vacation rental property. Let's say that the destination area it's in is called Nantucket. Will nantucketvacation.com be better for search engine optimization than nantucketlodge.com? since both Nantucket and vacation will be common search keywords? Or is it better to stick with the branding it was using? Um, okay. It was, uh, let's just let me finish. It was uh, previously Nantucket, nantucketlodge.com, but that, that lapsed. And so uh, it's just a, a generic uh, um, site URL now. The site had 32,000 views last quarter, 9,000 viewed the listing on search, 23,000 viewed listings on maps. I'm not sure if changing the URL from what it previously was um, will have uh, any ill effect that outweighs a more common uh, uh, keyword in the new <coughs> URL. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to read Okay, okay so um, Don, I'm a bit like, Firstly, like with anything, I would stick with Nantucket Lodge because that's something and I don't know how long the place has been around for, but I would probably stick with that. But when you say, like, when you say you're picking it for a GMB site, you mean buying the domain again and then using that to host a, a, the Google My Business website on? Is that what you're trying to say? Because regardless of, you know, you, you do realize that, like, optimization in terms of a GMB business site is virtually zero. Like you can't even set an, oh no, actually they have changed the, the actual title now is into an H1. But like you've literally only got a section where, you know, a body of text and that's about it. Like, you know, even if this was, even if this was you're actually just like taking the GMB out of it, and the, the the place always traded as Nantucket Lodge. The 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 flipping lodge itself is probably called on all the signage outside the hotel and everything. It's probably called Nantucket Lodge. All your OTAs are probably referencing Nantucket Lodge. You don't want to be changing it to Nantucket Vacation, like. Um, even for GMB, like even because obviously GMB and organic work on two separate things, you know, if somebody's looking for a lodge, you know, you don't need to search for something saying vacation into GMB to, to, to get the hotel pack or the local pack because Google understands that if somebody's searching for a lodge near Nantucket, lodge in Nantucket, a bed and breakfast in Nantucket, a, a resort in Nantucket, they know you want to go on a vacation or a wedding or something. You don't need to type into Google vacation in Nantucket. Like, 
nobody is going to literally be searching that in that sense. I want to go on holiday in Nantucket, or I want to go on vacation in Nantucket. No, just stick with Nantucket Lodge. Yo. Excellent. That's it. Our last question. So, um, wasn't there some rhyme about Nantucket? But it was quite dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think there was a rhyme. Yeah, there I was think there an was. old man. And no, from Nantucket, who uh, in, well, Tim, now uh, you want to watch your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's. Yeah. But you know this thing about about domains, by the way. Like you know, if you're building a business, you're probably going to want to build a brand. So at the end of the day, what do you go for, brand or keyword domain? Well, keyword domains are going a bit out of fashion these days, and people are pretty much into brands. So unless you can combine the two in some way. Yeah, he's probably going the wrong direction. Anyhow, so ended my words on none took it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Turkey, did you have anything you wanted to add? Nope, I would keep as simple as possible. I think okay. when it comes when in doubt, keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> Well, look. Um, it, I think it's there. If I, once I click this button, I think I think we'll go. Uh, actually, I won't click it. I think we'll we'll, we'll um, finish on. Uh, um, it, I think number nine is our last uh, question. Is what yeah. I'm trying. So, like, I mean, I've just even searched Nantucket Hotels for Nantucket Hotels for a. Uh, like, literally, Google does not put a vacation anywhere in it. Like, in any of the yeah no mm -mm. yeah but tell me though would you not think like if you were if you were selling vacations or package holidays or some sort of tours it wouldn't be a bad like i mean it wouldn't be a terrible no, no, no. Like, yeah, be but, bad. yeah what is, it would be well what is this but guy no in? no he was he was an actual lodge called nantucket lodge oh well then he'd want to stay land that's a that's a that's a really <laughs> nice name for a lodge like that's like for someone who's looking for like something like a bespoke or I don't know what they call them these mm. days, kind of small hotels, you know, what do they used to be called? Then? Yeah. Boutique hotels. Boutique. Oh, well, they God. are, they are uh, for the rest of the world. It never went boutique in America. They, that boutique still too boutique for America. Yeah, but maybe it's large over there. Maybe that's what a yeah, large yeah. is. It's now yeah. boutique. That's a yeah. name. I, I'd stick with that. I'd build my brand around that. Quite nice. Mm. All right. Yeah. Well, look, it, it's that time again. Um, but look, before we go, uh, I, I do want to point out um, the people like Brenda Malone, Ammon Johns, Rob Watts, Perry Bernard, R Richard and Hearn, and Adam Humphreys, um, people who... Uh, devote their time through the week to, to answer questions as they appear uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, and uh, their contribution is gratefully, uh, gratefully acknowledged. Uh, and of course, you guys, um, David Roseanne, who's not here tonight, uh, Micah fisher Kirshner, who just left, um, Tim Kappa and Masataki Weiss and Richard Hearn, um, I, I, I can't remember when I've had so much fun uh, doing these. We've only done 410, um, but finally we had one where I had fun. Um, and, and with Tim Kappa. Oh, it never ends. Anyway, um, we'll be going soon once I find the right button to click. Um, and that's not that one. Okay, we'll try this one. <laughs>